this edition of the Global Sport Fisherman, we're going to be talking about ballyhoo, specifically weedless ballyhoo. Uh, there seems to be, uh, for some reason this year, this season, a lot of people complaining about so much weed out there when they're trolling. And they're spending a tremendous amount of time uh, putting their baits out, bringing them right back in and whatnot. Um, what I'm going to show you today is a weedless, a perfect weedless ballyhoo rig, something we came up with about 20 years ago. Um, so let's get into that and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. What makes this rig weedless is the fact that you've got a single hook, which is a southern tuna style hook, which is like this, okay, where the point of the hook and the bend goes back towards the shank unlike a, a standard O'Shaughnessy type hook. That southern tuna style bend in the hook combined with the contour of the back of the bait. Once you rig it you can see that the hook just lays right on top of the back of the bait and weeds can, can just slide right over the top. There's no way you're going to catch weeds on this particular rig. And it's quite simple to rig. As you can see, the rig itself consists of a cable, which is this one here is rated at 275 pound test. That has a 220 pound test, American Fish and Wire mini stainless uh, swivel on the end. And as I said, it has a Southern Tuna style hook. Whether it is a Mustad 7766 or a Mustad 7691, um, that style hook is what results in a great weedless rig. Now, let's get into actually rigging this bait, and I'll show you how simple it is to do. All right, I'm going to rig two baits for you. I'm going to rig a, a medium, and then I'm also going to go into rigging a horse ballyhoo. Um, now, the only thing you need to rig this weedless rig is actually a open eye needle and you're going to need a little tiny deboner that we have and I'll show you what this is all used for and you're just going to need a bait knife that's it that's all that's required um, there is something else another tool that you can use and I recommend it highly um, and this is a little cleaner to clean out the insides of the ballyhoo it makes it a lot easier to rig this particular rig and um, it'll also once you see what it does, you'll see how your baits will last a lot longer for you. And what that is, to start out here, is we're going to clean the insides of this bait out. Most people will take a bait and they'll thumb it, to, which gets the green crap out. But that's all you're getting out when you do that, all right? A better way to do it is to take this little corkscrew, go right up inside the bait, and you're going to go right up to the gill plates and just twist it and work it back and forth and you'll see that you're going to be able to get everything out of this not just that green crap all right so just work it pull it out like this now you're going to take it and you're going to thumb it and you'll see everything coming out now you might have to do this a couple times but it you can see your baits by cleaning them out like this, they'll just last so much longer and they'll perform a lot better for you too. You know, one of the things that's left in the bait is the swim bladder, which is full of air. All right, now just take this bait, just wash it out a little bit. Just clean it up like that. Now that bait is ready to rig. Now you should do that Clean your bait out regardless whether you're rigging a single hook weedless rig, a double hook. However you rig your ballyhoo, you really should clean them out like that. All right, now, let me just clean up a little bit here. All right, now, to rig this bait like this with a single hook rig, what you're going to do is take your bait knife and you're going to make a, take a couple scales off right in front of that little back fin there and just make a little slit. Now you're going to take this deboner. Now this deboner just has a little notch in it and what you're going to do is you're just going to put that in that slit you made, center that notch so when you go into the bait you catch the backbone in there and you'll know it when you got it because you just can't go any further. 
All right, so once you've got that backbone, you twist that. And what that does, that takes out, actually takes out a little section of the backbone. Right? So now you've got a hole in the back of the bait where you're going to put an open eye needle. You're going to go right into that hole. You're going to go right into the stomach cavity. You can see it as it's going up through the bait. And you want to come out at the gill plates, right there at the throat latch, just like that. All right, now this particular rig, the hook is on there by way of a loop. So all you have to do is just take that hook right off, and this is what you're left with. You know, just bend that 20 pound manel right back like that. You're going to come over here with the open eye of the needle, grab that loop, and you're going to carefully work this back and out that hole. Just like that. Alright, now you're just going to take the hook and with the loop you're just going to bend, go right through the eye, right over the point, bring it down, have that crimp go right through, and now the hook is back on that cable rig. All right, now just pull it up a little bit, just grab that hook, just work it into the bait, pull it out like that, and you can see now that that hook just lays right on top. As I said and mentioned before, the contour of the back of the bait and that style hook results in a great weedless rig. All right, now to finish this bait off, you're going to break the bill back a little bit, and just pull it off like that. This 20 pound manel, and we use 20 pound manel because it's a little bit stiffer and in, the manel will last a lot longer than the um, standard copper wire. You're going to take the end of that manel, just go right up through the bottom of the bait. You're going to come right out that little soft spot, right on top of the head. And sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to get so you're going to take a little needle and just push it right through. Now this wire should go right up through and this is what's going to end up holding the bait in, in place. All right. So now you've got that stretched out just like that. Come down here and just flatten that out. You want to lay the cable underneath the bill like that. Bend the wire over and you're actually going to start wrapping this backwards from the front back. It makes it so much easier to do that way rather than trying to wrap it this way and hold the cable and the leader and everything in place. That's it. You have a perfect weedless rig right now. Right? You just want to make sure everything is nice and tight. As you can see also, there's a little, you're going to end up with a little bit of cable right in front of the bill. A lot of people, you know, uh, will say, well, that doesn't look natural and whatnot, and it's going to scare the fish away. Well, I mean, here's a, a ballyhoo. I can't imagine a fish differentiating between this cable and that bill. Um, so I don't think that's a problem whatsoever. Now, as far as the... 220 pound swivel here, this is where you're going to attach your leader. However long your leader is, however, whatever pound test and so forth, you're going to attach your leader right here. Um, some people have actually taken a little tiny squid skirt and put it over top of this if they really wanted to hide it and whatnot. But this, as a result, is a perfect weedless rig. Now, it's a single hook rig and because of the way it's rigged and so forth, and the idea of not catching any, we any weeds on it, it's primarily a skipping bait. I mean, any bait that goes below the, the surface is going to catch, even if it's rigged like this, it's still going to catch weed up here at the leader. So this is primarily a skipping bait. And this thing will skip across those weeds all day long with no problem whatsoever. You can rig any size ballyhoo, whether it's a small dink bait um, or whether it's a, a horse ballyhoo and whatnot, and you can rig it the same way. Um, the only thing you're going to have to change is the size of the hook that you're going to put in there. 
Now, as you can see, and, uh, with the hook being back here, it's back here as far as it'll go in the bait, okay, which is going to help you big time as far as short strikes. You can also see that the, the um, rig is made out of 275 pound test cable, uh, which is certainly going to help you if, uh, in, in a situation with Wahoo and whatnot, or even, you know, Mako sharks and that type of thing. Um, you can make this rig yourself. You can make it out of uh, mono, uh, but I don't really see the advantage to, to making it out of mono. Uh, with the cable inside like that, um, it just makes for a great rig. Um, it's all inside the rig, uh, in the, inside the bait, so it's certainly not going to um, have any effect on anything that's uh, line shy or anything like that. Um, it's a great, great little rig. Uh, and it's something that can be used over and over again, too. It's not a one-time shot on these rigs. All right, let's rig one more bait, okay? I just rigged this medium bait. Um, and now let's get into rigging this horse ballyhoo. And I'll show you. It's basically the same way we're going to do it. Um, the cable on this particular rig is a little bit longer because um, we've got a much larger bait here that we have to deal with. Again, we're going to clean this bait out just like I did with the other one. This is a little bit larger cleaning tool. But you're just going to go in this bait, twist it, work it out. You can actually feel how you're grabbing all the entrails in there. And as I said before, I can't overemphasize, you should do this regardless of how you're going to rig your baits. The amount of, that you can get out of it just, is, just enhances the whole bait. I mean, when you look in a fish market, anything that's laying there for sale in a fish market, they've all been cleaned. I mean, when something dies, regardless of what it is, I mean, it, it starts to rot immediately. And by getting rid of all the entrails in it, it's going, going to slow that whole process down. It doesn't take that long to do, but the benefits are just too great to ignore. All right, now I'm just going to clean this out a little bit. Get this ready to rig. Let me just make a quick swipe here. Okay. All right. Again, we're going to take this bait, take a couple scales off right in front of that back fin there, make a little slit, and then you're going to take that deboner, just like we did with the smaller bait, and go in there. And that slit, center it, you know, get an eyeball on it, and center it, and get it right in there. You'll know it when you've got that backbone. And you can actually hear it. You know, we're just tacking, we're not cracking the backbone, we're actually taking a little section out of it. All right, and that section gives us the ability to take this needle now, and just go right into that stomach cavity, and you're going to come right out, again, come right out the throat latch. Just like that, all right? Just lay that manel over like that. Take this back hook right off. And just grab that loop with the needle and just carefully bring it back oh, through the bait. When you're going through that gill plates in the throat latch, you don't want to try to, you, you try not to catch it on the, uh, the needle. You don't want to rip it up in any way. All right, now that that's through, just go through with the loop over the point and just bring that crimp right through. Just get that right into the stomach cavity. See how it just lays right on top? It's just perfect. All right, bring that manel down. Uh, just make a little hole right in the top. And just come right up underneath. Find that hole that you just made. Nice and right in. And let's try this again. Through. 
There we go. Alright, break the bill back. Lay that bill up in there. Uh, the leader right up underneath. You want to make sure that when you bend this rigging wire, that when it's finished, there's no strain on the cable. You're actually going to be pulling this bait from the wire itself, the rigging wire. All right, now again, just lay that down underneath the bill, come down and start wrapping from the front back. You can see that is a perfect, perfect weedless rig. Now, as you can see, when I wrapped this, it was really quite simple. I mean, all I did was just come up underneath the bill, the mouth, and down, and just wrapped it right around the bill. If you want, I mean, you can make this whole piece of manel considerably longer, and you can get real elaborate, and you can take the eyeballs out, and you can go through the eye sockets and wrap the gills, and then back down and so forth. There's a number of different ways that you can, you can wrap this up. Uh, but this is without a doubt the simplest way to do it. Um, if you notice, I also I have the eyeballs, I left them in. I mean, I've got enough crap laying around here. I really don't want to be taking the eyeballs out now. You can uh, rig this without taking the eyes out. You can rig it by taking the eye, whatever, however you prefer as far as the eyeballs go. Um, most, more often than not, if you rig this the way it is with the eyeballs in and throw it over the side, um, eventually the eyeballs are going to start bugging out. So when you bring the bait in to check it and whatnot, just grab the eyes, pull it out, pull it out, and throw the bait back over. Um, you know, that's about it. As far as, I want to mention too about cleaning the, that bait out. Another reason for cleaning that bait out, okay, is it gives you a better opportunity to actually refreeze these baits, to rig them and then to freeze them. I mean, this is not a bait that you would put out there under a normal trolling situation. This is a bait that you would really want to have rigged ahead of time, leaders attached the whole bit, and have them frozen in your freezer, in a little freezer bag or something like that. So when you do get in that situation where you can't um, keep a bait in the water, you know, more than two seconds. You know, sometimes you can't even get it into position where you have to bring it back in again to take the weeds off. Take these out of the freezer. Uh, they'll be rock hard. Just put the leader on your snap swivel or however you connect it and just throw it over the side frozen. Within minutes, it's just going to thaw right out. But this is a bait that you would want for those situations. Um, now, some people wonder, you know, what is the hookup ratio um, with this type of a setup here, with that hook laying there like that, and there's nothing protruding and so forth. All I can say is that for, if you're targeting marlin, strictly marlin, this is really not the way to go. Uh, if you're looking for tuna, mahi, um, uh, wahoo, or whatever, okay, this rig will outfish any rig that there is that's in the cockpit having the weeds taken off of it. They're in the cockpit having the weeds taken off of it, they're out of the water, they're not catching squat. This is in the water, it'll definitely catch fish, definitely. I mean, these are soft baits and whatnot as far as, you know, a big tuna coming up, a wahoo coming up and attacking this, they just crush this thing and I guarantee you they'll get hooked. So that's another reason why you would want to clean these baits out completely because you can refreeze them and so forth. All right, as I've just shown you, okay, by rigging a small me medium here and a large horse ballyhoo, they're really quite simple to rig. Um, and as you can see the results, uh, it is without a doubt a perfect weedless rig. Um, I have never seen a rig where it is this Weedless. I mean, a lot of there's nothing on the hook. There's no wire or anything like that. I've seen that over the years and so forth. Uh, but you'll, as you, if you rig a few of these, put them in your f cockpit freezer and whatnot, take them out when you need them. You'll be surprised, um, and you'll be glad you did. Um, all of these tools that I used for rigging this, um, they're all available on our website. Uh, the rigs are available as well. 
Um, as I said before too, you can make your own rigs. It's not that difficult to do. There's not a whole lot of uh, finesse required to make something like this. Um, and you can use you know, cable. You can definitely use mono. The only drawback of using mono is uh, when you get up into 150 pound and so forth mono, you have to remember that your crimp has to be able to go through the eye of the hook. Um, now, when you get into mono rigs and the higher pound test, it's going to be a much larger crimp than what I have here. This is here is I believe it's a 1.3 millimeter on 275 pound test cable. You can get that crimp through any the guy of any hook just about. With mono it's not going to be that easy to do. Um, and you don't want an oversized hook in the bait. Um, in other words you can't take this particular rig here that we rigged this horse ballyhoo with and put it in this small medium one. Um, it's going to defeat the purpose of, a, of the weedless you know, concept here because the larger hook is going to be sticking up and weeds are just going to catch right underneath it. The weedless ballyhoo, as I just demonstrated, is not a difficult rig to make and it's not a difficult rig um, to apply to a bait and so forth. Um, we have all of the tools that was shown here on our website. Um, if you have any questions at all about rigging baits, regardless of whether it's uh, this bait or any other particular bait, Give us a call at 800-979-3474, or you can get us on the, uh, our website uh, just using the contact information. Um, that's it for this edition of the Global Sport Fisherman. Thanks very much.